we have two concentric circles x and y and we have x having radius of 2 and y having radius of 3. Okay, so that's not too hard to visualize. So we have the circle y with radius of 3 and inside we have circle x with radius of 2. So here we go and they share a common center because they are concentric. Let's read on. Two vertices A and B are chosen on X. So we have A and B on X. And one vertex C is chosen on Y such that ABC is equilateral. And we wish to find the product of all possible side lengths of ABC. I want to share two solutions with you guys. The first one utilizing law of cosines. So the first one using law of cosines. And the second solution using power of a point power of a point and i want to give special recognition to two commenters the first one gabriel n for being the very first person to correctly answer this question and gabriel n used the first approach of using law of cosines and i want to recognize i also want to give a huge recognition to jiva raj shetty for coming up with an ingenious solution using power of a point that I'm also going to share with you today. So let's get started. So we have two vertices on X, A and B, and the third vertex on Y. So let's draw all possible equilateral triangles, and it's pretty obvious that there are only two. The first one looks something like this. The first one looks something like this. There is an equilateral triangle. So here's one. And the second one looks something like this. Here is the second equilateral triangle. So the second one looks like this. The first one looks like this. And we want to multiply the side lengths, all possible side lengths of ABC. So you want to find the side lengths for the first one, side lengths for the second one, and you want to find S sub 1 times S sub 2. So how can we find those? Well, we know the radius of circle X is 2, and we know radius of circle Y is 3, so obviously we have to utilize those somehow. So let's try to connect the side lengths of the equilateral triangles to the red eye of 2 and 3. And it's pretty obvious that one way is by drawing this radius, which is length of 2, and we know this entire thing has length of 3, and of course we have the side lengths right here, and we can let our side lengths be x. So we have our side lengths being x right here. We have side lengths of 3, side lengths of 2, and we know this is 30 degrees because it's 1 half of 60 degrees. And now we can use law of cosines to find x. For this one, we know. So we have our triangle. So that's our triangle. That's x, that's 3, that's 2, and we have 30 degrees. And we can set up the law of cosines equation as 2 squared is equal to 3 squared plus x squared minus 2 times 3 times x or 6x times cosine of 30 degrees. And we can do something very similar with the smaller equilateral triangle. For this one, for this one, for the one on top, we know the radius of 2. So we know this as length of 2. And we know the entire length has length of 3. We know this is 30 degrees because you're splitting the 60 degree angle. And we have our side length x. And we see that we have a triangle that looks very similar. We have x, 30 degrees, and 3 and 2. And notice that we are going to have the same equation because we have 30 degrees in between 3 and x for both triangles. And of course, we have additional 2. And of course, the x value for the second triangle, the x value for this triangle is going to be smaller than x value for this triangle. And that's okay, because you're going to get two solutions from this. You're, you have quadratic equation, so there should be two solutions, and we wish to find the product of the solutions. So we can just focus on this equation. So simplifying this equation, we have x squared minus 6x times cosine of 30 degrees. You can evaluate cosine of 30 as square root of 3 over 2, but there's really no need to because you can find the answer without knowing cosine of 30. And we have plus 5 is 0 because subtracting 4 to both sides, we have 9 minus 4, which is 5. And you know by Vieta's formula 
by Viet Das formula, that product of the roots, the product of the solution to this quadratic equation, which is what we want to find, the product of the solutions is going to be equal to the constant term or 5. So we know our answer is 5. And just in case you don't know Viet Das formula, let me prove this particular one for you really quickly. So we know this is solution. We know this is solution side length 1 and side length 2, which means this entire thing can be factored as x minus s1 times x minus s2. And when you multiply this out, what is going to be the constant term? The constant term is going to be negative s1 times negative s2. So you know this thing is equal to negative s1 times negative s2 or s1 times s2 or the product of the roots. So that's telling us the answer is 5. Now let me show you the second solution using power of a point that that Jiva Raj Shetty came up with. And this is very, very ingenious and very elegant. So I want to share this with you. So let's draw our diagram just one more time. So we have the large circle with radius of 3, and we have small circle with radius of 2. And we have the large equilateral triangle. We have large equilateral triangle going something like this. And we know we can find smaller equilateral triangle by drawing a line parallel to the, to the line on top. So we have another equilateral triangle. We, have, we can have another equilateral triangle like this, and so on. But we want the equilateral triangle with two points on the this, on this smaller circle, the circle with radius 2. So that's the second triangle that you want. So we have the first triangle, which is the entire thing, and the second triangle, which is the one at the bottom. And we wish to find the side lengths of the first one times the side lengths of the second one. So we want to find s sub 1 times s sub 2. And if you remember, if you remember power of a point from your geometry class, so let's draw a circle. And let's say we have a point outside the circle, and you have one, one second line that's hitting the circle at two points, and one tangent line, tangent to circle at some point. So that's the tangent line, and we have a second line hitting the circle at two points. You may remember that this length, this length A, times the entire length B, so A times B, is equal to the length of the tangent, so the C, squared. So that's one of the power of the points formula, and we can actually use that, because in our case, we have a being s sub 1 and b being s sub 2. We have s sub 1 times the entire length s sub 2, and that's what you want to find. So if we can find the length of the tangent, length of the tangent segment from the point, and we square that, we should have our answer. So let me simplify the diagram just a bit. Just a bit. So we have the circle with radius 2. So that's the circle. So we have circle with radius 2. We have a point from outside, and we are hitting the circle at two points, two points, and we want to find s sub 1, this length, times the entire length, s sub 2. And we know that's equal to the length of the tangent squared. So we can find the length of tangent, so if we can find this length, and we square that, we should be done. And we see, we see that, let's call this length c. We know this entire length from this point. We know this entire length from this point all the way to the center is 3, because that's the radius of the larger circle. And we know this length to the point of tangency is 2, the radius of the smaller circle. So that's telling us that 3 squared is 2 squared plus c squared using Pythagorean theorem. That's telling you c squared is 5. And of course, c squared is the answer we want, s sub 1 times s sub 2. So our answer, our answer is 5.